Gladiator's Assault was released on November 14th, 2007. While most people remember this set for the introduction of the Gladiator Beast, the deck would fail to see top tier success until receiving newer support later on. However, two additional products would be released around this time that would make an immediate impact in the competitive metagame. The Light and Darkness Power Pack, a very strange product released on the same date as Gladiator's Assault, contained Light and Darkness Dragon, a two tribute monster monster that would terrorize the format, and the powerful video game promo surfaced once more, as Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2008, released on December 4th, 2007, contained a card that would straight up power creep Sakuretsu armor, Dimensional Prison. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in, because anything is possible! Welcome to the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Folks, we have finally done it. After what feels like a hundred years, 2007 has been left in the dust, and it is time to enter the year of 2008. Now, this is one of the most important years in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Geyserus is released this year, rocketing Gladiator Beast to the top of the standings for one of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s arguable only Tier 0 formats. Dark Arm Dragon and all of its comrades in the Phantom Darkness come out soon as well, warping Yu-Gi-Oh! Forever from the advantage-oriented gameplay style that GOAT players like to the way we play. Play it today. I'm so excited to show you how this happened in real time, but first, we've got one final fair format. So, in late 2007, there was an event, SJC San Mateo, and in early 2008, there was an event, SJC Orlando. These are the two events that we've consolidated into this singular episode. Now, SJC San Mateo, I... are we past the first minute? Ah, we are. Okay. It was a clusterfuck. No one could agree on what the best deck was, no one could agree on what was playable, and as a result of the top eight is a bunch of who's who's of decks we've already checked out. Philly Luna ends up taking it with Perfect Circle. Congratulations to them. No surprise, a good player playing a good deck. But the rest of these decks are ridiculous. Demise OTK returns uh, in the top eight for one final time, months after a lot of its really good cards were banned. Big Monarch, a deck playing nine Monarchs tops, as as does Cosmos, a deck affectionately referred to as Macro Monarch. Now, this only graduated from playground playability for one event, and afterwards, every deck sans circle from SJC San Mateo dropped off the face of the earth. They just weren't optimized enough and could not compete with the big boys. At SJC Orlando, things were a lot more solved. Now, Orlando was a bloodbath. Jeff Jones showed up and played a deck that would eventually become called Big City, but was wiped out in the first round after a card legality problem. Many of the duelist pack heroes that were necessary for that deck were not technically legal yet. These legality issues were compounded with a bunch of gameplay changes that were implemented for this event. First, your opponent got a chance to shuffle your deck at this event, and Dale Belito, whose deck I played last episode, came up to a metagame staff member complaining that his opponent had stacked after their first round. Additionally, note-taking was first allowed at this event. That's right, you used to be able to write down what you saw off of something like a trap dust shoot, and you can see that decks like mine that are playing it will absolutely take advantage of it. This event was dominated by two Two decks. Light and Darkness Dragon, which is functionally perfect circle splashing one extremely weird card that came in a baffling side product, and Gadget. Now, I'll be playing Matthew Tuxford's Gadget list, and Simo will be playing Cedric Sequeira's Light and Darkness Dragon list. This was the actual semi-final at this event, and while Simo's pilot ended up taking it, I have a lot of faith in this list. Realistically, the only way you're going to be able to out-advantage perfect circle is if you can make your gadgets trade with their monarchs. Now, that's almost impossible, but cards like Dimensional Prison and Shrink insulate your monsters, and cards like Hydro Get On mean that a well-timed combat trick can win you the entire game. What's more, if you have something like a Banisher of the Radiance on your side of the field backed up by a Solemn Judgment, it's possible your opponent can't even get the Destiny Hero Disc Commander in the graveyard to start the chain in the first place. This deck is all removal and all monsters that replace themselves. It really does feel like one of the very first decks that took advantage of 
of uh, some of the really powerful pluses in this game. I'm super excited to try it out. I think this list is exceptionally tight. I really do think this has the tools to take it. And all in all, Simo's on a two game win streak. So the pressure's on him, buddy. So let's go through the individual cards. First, we've got three copies of Banisher of the Radiance. This is macro on legs. Unfortunately, while Dim Fissure is legal, it doesn't actually do anything. And that's why these macro monarch decks really fell off. A lot of the time you'd have a hand of something like Dim Fissure, Dim Fissure, Reza, and there's nothing you can do with that. Additionally, it cuts you off of your most powerful recursive uh, tribute summonable monster in Treeborn Frog. So Banisher of the Radiance, uh, the gadget deck figures is good on its own. And as a result, you can protect it with things like Shrink, with Dimensional Prison, and with Solemn Judgment in order to keep your opponent's graveyard offline. We have got a copy of Breaker of the Magical Warrior, again, off the Forbidden list, finally. This card is back to limited, and we are going to be taking advantage of it. Triple Cyber Dragon, this deck is really threat light, and as a result, you need something that attacks. Cyber Dragon is good enough. It is also very, very well timed with a hammer shot. Cyber Dragon has slightly less attack than a Monarch, so the removal spells in this deck are specifically coordinated to ensure that your 2100 attack monster is all that can stick. We've got three Hydro Get On. This card is both my favorite and least favorite card ever released. If it ever procs its effect, you win the entire match, but getting it to proc is another story. Neospatian Grand Mole is in this deck as well, as is Red Gadget, Yellow Gadget, and Green Gadget. These are all semi-limited at the time, in case you're wondering why we're playing two. Enemy Controller is in here, as is Fissure and Hammer Shot. I can't believe that these cards are being played, but they are removal. Heavy Storm is here, as is Lightning Vortex, Nobleman of Crossout, Pot of Avarice, Triple Shrink, Smashing Ground, Triple Bottomless, Triple Dimensional Prison, Mirror Force, Solemn Judgment, Torrential Tribute, and Trap Dashu. Name of the game for the Spell and Trap lineup is Removal and Battle Traps. You want to ensure that your opponent is not only never going to stick a threat, if they do stick a threat, it is never going to be able to attack. In the side deck, we've got three Kinetic Soldier. Uh, this is in here for a very silly reason. Uh, it has a lot of good matchups against stuff like Big City. Um, and as a result, it maybe comes in. This is a uh, Cypher Soldier, you may be noticing. This card's name was actually eroded for some strange reason. Snipe Hunter is in here as well. I hope I never have to board into this sucker. Hate this card. Two copies of Lightning Vortex, three copies of Dark Bribe. A lot of nonsense uh, flying around the format. Really good to be able to Dark Bribe something like, oh, I don't know, let's say hypothetically a Wave Motion Cannon. Mind Crush is very good with Trap Dust Shoot, but realistically, you're not going to be able to proc it unless you're going first. We've got Double Pulling the Rug and Triple Royal Oppression which might honestly come in. If Alex is forced to play fair with his light and darkness dragon, he might not be able to get off to the races. So let's see if we can make it happen. Two in a row, ladies and gentlemen, we are one away from that three-peat. I guess we technically did have a three-peat as some of you guys pointed out at the very beginning of the series, but I still think it's pretty impressive that since that very few first episodes, we haven't gone three in a row since, neither Joseph or myself. And so we're gonna try to bring it home with our favorite deck being a perfect circle. Now we are are playing Perfect Circle then for this episode because during this time there wasn't really a lot of diversity. We had an SJC San Mateo in December and then SJC Orlando in January, but a lot of the decks around this time were the same. Gladiator's Assault was released, but the set really didn't have a major impact on the format, at least not yet, because we didn't have the good Gladiator Beast cards around this time. Geyserus, I believe, comes in Light of Destruction and Proving Ground, and I also believe Darius as well, were released in Phantom Darkness, which should be coming up in the next episode. So you guys are definitely gonna wanna stay tuned for that one because Phantom Darkness is one of the craziest sets in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. But we are playing Perfect Circle because I have accepted Rise of the Storm Monarch as my Lord and Savior. That is why we are piloting this deck once more. Joseph's gonna be piloting a gadget deck and these decks did actually face off in the semifinals of SJC Orlando. And so we thought this was a good way to show off what the popular decks were around this time. Gadget to deck Joseph's play before Perfect Circle is a deck I've played before, and we do have some new cards to discuss, so let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up is Breaker. It's great. Really no explanation needed for breaking the back row. We have one card trooper, still good for loading up the graveyard. Two copies of DD Crow. This was a main deck check choice specifically because going up against the other circle decks, you can hit stuff like Disc Commander. You can hit any of the other Destiny heroes. You can hit stuff that's going to get brought back with Premature Burial, Call of the Haunted. And so having this in the main deck is actually pretty heads up. We also have the one Disc Commander, Fearmonger, and two copies of Malicious. 
Two copies of Gravekeeper Spy. This is just nice because it provides you tribute fodder for not only Rise of the Storm Monarch, but actually our next card and newest card, which is Light and Darkness Dragon. Now, Light of Darkness Dragon was released into the game in a very weird way. It was actually released as part of this pack that I believe came with some packs of Dark Revelation 4. I think it also came in a manga as well, but this is one of the first two tribute monsters that has a very, very big payoff for playing it. I mean, the only one we've really seen up until now is I think Dark Magician of Chaos. And I mean, that card's Magician of Fate. So, I mean, it's gotta be pretty good for that to happen. If you've never seen this card before, once per chain during either player's turn, when a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated, mandatory effect, this card loses exactly 500 attack and defense, and the activation is negated. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, target one monster in your graveyard, if possible, destroy all cards you control, and special summon that monster. So the bad side of Light and Darkness Dragon is the fact that the effect is reciprocal, so it can negate your own cards as well. And being 2,800 attack, that means it has five full negations in the card. However, the plus side here is that this is one of the strongest stun tools you could possibly play, and Perfect Circle nestles this card into the deck very well because you have the ability to get a bunch of monsters onto the field with your Malicious, with your Revival cards, even now with Gravekeeper Spy. And if you can stick a Light and Darkness Dragon, your opponent's gonna have a very difficult time clearing it because they're gonna have to use multiple cards to lower its attack and then have something strong enough that can actually hit over it because Light and Darkness Dragon will just be negating everything. And even if they do kill it, let's say you have a Disc Commander in the graveyard. Yeah, you may lose your field, but Disc Commander comes back and you draw two cards. So it's just another way to proc Disc Commander as well. This card, while it may have only had a very short time in competitive history, is absurd. And I really hope to demonstrate the power of this card today. Since we're on the topic of new cards, Marshmallow is another card we haven't discussed yet. This is a very cute card and actually a very devastating one as well. Cannot be destroyed by battle and after damage calculation, if it's attacked and to face down at the start of the damage step, the attacking player takes 1000 damage. Many a games were lost by the opponent having less than 1000 life points and attacking into a set monster being Marshmallow, the game was immediately over. This card for how cute it was, was infuriating to play against and is actually a bit problematic because it can't be destroyed by battle also a nice piece of tribute fodder for either a Ryza or a Light and Darkness Dragon. Three Rise of the Storm Monarch are Lord and Savior, so this needs no explanation. You guys have already seen the power that this card has, and uh, I see there's two Sangen in here, which is actually incorrect. I had to double check this. Uh, we're missing our copy of Stratos. I don't know how we got two Sangen in the list, but for whatever reason, the one online has Sangen listed twice, and we don't have Stratos in the deck, which it was played, because obviously that's one of the strongest cards. So we did fix that. The one Sangen, as well as Elemental Hero Stratos, Snipe Hunter, Spear, Reaper, and of course, Treeborn Frog. The spells, Brain Control, Two Destiny Draw, Foolish Burial, the newest SJC prize card, Gold Sarcophagus. This was back during a time where games actually lasted more than two turns. So having a Gold Sark on turn one was actually big. You could pick the strongest card in your deck, and on the second standby phase, you knew that card was going to get added to your hand, and it's something your opponent really, really had to worry about. This is back during a time where prize cards were actually just broken. It's insane, and I really hope we get to show this card off as well. Heavy Sword Mystical Space Typhoon, Nobleman of Crossup, Pot of Avarice, Premature Burial, Rhoda, and one Soul Exchange. For the traps, Call the Haunted, Crush Cards Back, baby, against Gadgets. This card may not be that good, but we're still gonna try it anyway. Mirror Force, Double Phoenix Wing, Wind Blast, Torrential Tribute, and Trap Dust Shoe. For the side deck, two copies of Cypher Soldier, previously known as Kinetic Soldier, before it got a name change. This card's good against the Warrior deck specifically, because it can go up to a huge amount of attack, 3350 specifically. Two Cyber Dragon, one DD Crow to pair with our couple in the main deck, one Nobleman of Crossout, three Dust Tornado, two Pulling the Rug for the Monarch Mirror Matches and Perfect Circle by extension, two Royal Decree for any Trap Decks, and two Royal Oppression as well. This is going to be a blast. This may be the end of the Circle era, but I think we are still going to probably see Perfect Circle maybe in the future, but Phantom Darkness is up next, ladies and gentlemen, so these decks are not going to stay top tier for long. I can't wait to see how this episode goes. Joseph, this is going to be on you to see if you can stop the three-peat from happening, so ladies and gentlemen, it's it's time to duel. Joseph, I am super excited for this episode. Uh, not necessarily because it's Gladiator's Assault, but more so because it's one episode prior to Phantom Darkness. And before we get into it, I do have one question to ask you. Yeah. Have you accepted Rise of the Storm Monarch as your Lord and Savior? 
<laughs> you know, uh, it's it's been a rough week for me. Um, you never want to be opposing uh, deities, and I have learned the hard way via the games that we played last week, the games that we played the week before, the games that you played during the charity event. You know what? I am willing to accept Rise of the Storm Monarch as my personal lord and savior. You got it. Now, maybe now that you've done that, maybe you'll start winning some again, because it seems like there's an interesting correlation to when that happened. But I mean, this is, uh, this is we, we did decide to forego the wheel this episode, and I know people may miss the wheel, but I think the wheel will be coming back very, very shortly. And I think this will be a good showcase. We've got two decks around this time that had multiple tops, and this is really the format at this time, right? Gladiator's yeah. Assault did basically nothing to the game, which, uh, y y shocker, a GX set not impacting the format, weird. But uh, I I'm ready, I'm ready for this one. This is gonna be fun. For sure. And of course, next time, Phantom Darkness will ruin the format again. Uh, here's the deal, folks. We have been very spoiled by the fact that, for some reason, the way Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved the first of every other set, uh, the meta is in disarray and there's 15 playable decks, and by the second, in this case, SJC Orlando, yeah, it's whittled down to two. And uh, what you are seeing now are, are the two top decks from that era. I just hope that well, I can do uh, my father, Robbie, proud. There's also the, the macro deck, but we don't talk about that one. We do, uh, however, talk about our patron for this episode to shout out, and that is Derek Games. Thank you for the support. Okay, Joseph, the rock, paper, scissors generator is currently on a rock, so people know that it can be a rock. I'm going yeah, to refresh uh -huh. the yeah, page. Yeah, refresh it? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, scissors for the 12th time in a row. Wow. Interesting RPS generator. You know, I, I just got to say, I am I am so very happy that there is an online client that I can tell is more rigged than the dueling book simulator. So while you were ranting, I actually just refreshed it two more times and paper came up and then rock came up again. Oh, so yeah. it's not oh. rigged. Oh, yeah. It's no, just no. you keep losing the 33% oh, sure. every time, buddy. What can I say? I'm oh, sorry. Man. I'm sorry. Well, here's what you I'll can be going say. first. You could say that you're going second, but I understand that you're a coward. I understand that I, I have to do whatever I have to do. I am the biggest coward ever, which is why I do have to go first. Good luck though, buddy. Uh, this is, you know, th this is, it's, it's something. It's, it's something. All right. I'm going to start by setting a card and I'm going to set a couple and I'll pass it over to you. A one-time heavy storm. Nope. All right, anything in standby? Nope, you're good. Fine. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to summon the worst card in the history of time. Uh, let me introduce you to my good pal, Hydro Get On. Hell yeah. Uh, that's kind of scary, actually, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, that's fine. I hate this card. Uh, it dies to everything. It gets bottomless. It gets Sakuretsu armored. Uh, at this point, it starts being able to be deprisoned. Uh, it gets run over by everything. Uh, it stacks up poorly against every single card, but if you ever proc its effect, you do win the game. So I'm going to try right now to get that sucker in. Let's see if that holds true. Uh, it is a disc commander, so you will get to proc the effect. So theoretically, you should win the game here. Let's see. <laughs> oh my God. I, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> folks, I would like to thank the Academy. Uh, wow, everyone who believed in me. I'd like to thank uh, my parents who, upon my birth, said that's a child who will one day resolve the effect of Hydro Get On. Well, mom and dad, happy Mother's and Father's Day, respectively. Uh, I'm going to get in for 1600 Sure, that's fine. All right, so here's the downside. I know because you set two cards, you're about to draw 15 cards with this uh, Destiny Hero Disc Commander. One of those two has got to be a uh, Call of the Haunted, and I'm pretty sure, were they playing Limit Reverse at this time? I don't think they were. I don't think they were, no. All right, to prevent that from happening in main phase two, I'm going to overlay for a copy of Evelzar Lagia. Of course, of course. They are dinosaurs, and th that would be a great way to do it. All right, I will draw. Anything for me? Uh, no, just a really happy sigh that you didn't flip up a call at end step. Okay, so we'll go to main one now, and this is a bit of a weird one. All right, no, no, no. I'm going you always to... say this is a bit of a weird one, but when I watch these videos back, your hand is like <laughs> Snatch Steel, Heavy Storm, Dark Hole, Pot of Greed. Well, then I can't wait to hear what you say about this hand. I'm just going to set and pass again. Go ahead. What is going on? Simo, if oh, I actually, resolve... I'm setting one more card, too. Sorry, setting one more card. Simo, if I resolve Hydra get on twice, I, I'm going to be so happy. You have no idea. I'm Maybe going if to you resolve it twice, though, you end up losing. Maybe oh. it, like, reverses the luck from resolving it once. Shit, I didn't think about that. Okay, well, I'll draw for turn. I will dust shoot you here. Well, guess what, motherfucker? I will not be resolving Hydra Get on twice because I you drew, drew the third <laughs> copy! 
Oh, that's so goddamn annoying. Double hammer shot gadget get on. Okay, yeah, you can get the yellow gadget back into your deck, Are you please. sure, buddy? I mean, that. listen, I, yeah. the hydro get on's looking a little tasty. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and special summon that gadget and put it on top of the deck so that you know yep. that I'm not chatting. Not super beat up about it. Uh, like a sixth of the deck is gadgets, so not difficult to get them back. But God, that was the worst draw. 42 cards, the worst draw. Ugh. Christ, alive. I don't even know if I can profitably summon it because if I do and you have a torrential, I'm so unbelievably punished, but I need a clock on you. I'm gonna go for it. It is the torrential. Okay, I do have the solemn judgment for that. Wow, okay. So yeah, that's fine. It's not fantastic. I'll go to combat and try and get in. Yep, so uh, it's my treeborn frog. So you are actually going to hit in here for 32. All right, I'll trigger the hydro get on. Just think how crazy this would have been if I normaled the <laughs> fucking yellow gadget. <laughs> right, that would have been insane. Uh, end right, phase, I will space the back row. Ugh, it's a bottomless. Okay, I know you have double hammer shot too, which doesn't make me feel too confident here. I do, so your monarch at minimum has to trade with one of my hydro get ons. Uh, because if you don't, I can hammer your monarch and then win. Yeah, we're not going to be doing that. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn. Stand by me. Oh, and I will res the uh, treeborn. Oh, you'll you, which res it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. But yeah. Uh, ooh, this is a little frustrating. Yeah, I don't think you're dead here as a result of that. No way it could be too treeborn, could it? I, it's tr I think treeborn's limited in this format. <laughs> yeah, so quite literally no way. Uh, what yeah. would you be setting otherwise? Could be a fear monger. That would be pretty terrible. Um. Hmm. Well, I guess I will uh, go to battle. I'll attack into the Hydra get on here. Okay, it's going to make sense why I forgot Treeborn Frog. It is Marshmallow! How the fuck do I out this card? <laughs> you have a pretty easy... Oh, wait, no hammer shots both players! <laughs> Hammer shot does, in <laughs> fact, count me. All right, I guess we'll get the frog. All right, he's down. Whoa, that's a problem. Okay, go ahead. I forgot it's not Smashing Ground. Smashing Ground is a good card. Oh, uh, I would kill for a Smashing Ground. Oh, and it gets better. Oh, my God. All right, better. so we're going to bring back the Treeborn Frog. Yep. And Joseph, meet your newest friend, Light and Darkness Dragon. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think this is good. Uh, I can swing into one of these, but uh, yeah, that, that might be about it. Okay. Go ahead, buddy. All right, I'll draw for turn. Oh, God. All right, how does this card work? It's pretty insane. Anytime an effect is activated, it mandatory negates the effect. And how does it interact with that second effect? So can you give me the rundown on Light and Darkness Dragon? Yeah, so Light and Darkness Dragon's effect is, it's a mandatory effect that when an effect is activated of a spell trap or monster effect, Light and Darkness Dragon loses 500 attack and defense and then it negates the effect. I don't think it destroys the card. I think it just negates the effect. So mm -hmm. monster effects uh, such as breaker, breaker would stay on the field. Uh, but then if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard through any means, basically, then I get to resurrect any monster in my graveyard, basically. And are you able to target itself? It can't. It says cannot be special summoned. Oh, thank God. Okay. It's the first it line of text. Yeah, it can't revive itself. I'm like, Quite there's literally. no way this card can revive itself. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. Now, unfortunately, I believe it can revive a different card in your graveyard that might be a huge fucking problem for me. That is correct. Yes. <sighs> All right, this sucks, but I'm going to switch my uh, Hydra get on to defense and pass it back to you. I was fully expecting like double hammer shot and then come in with something big and then uh, just attack. But All right, I'll draw. Uh, the weird part about Lad is that that it's it is awkward not times. just me uh you right. are it not is able reciprocal. to really activate anything either correct and that's what makes it awkward because uh you know it, it's very powerful but how powerful you know <laughs> so yeah. i think i, I do kind of want to put you on a clock i know you have double hammer shot in hand i don't know your last two draws and you're going to be drawing a card for turn here however this will possibly force you to do something so i will normal summon a snipe hunter and i will clear both of your uh, monsters that's cute uh you can't snipe hunter because it'll trigger the light and darkness dragon okay and i will pass the turn right, i'll draw Ooh. That's an interesting one. Oh, that's a really interesting one. All right, I have to think. I was saying, second. yeah, I was saying in my deck building portion how Light and Darkness Dragon is one of the few two tribute monsters that was actually competitively viable because prior to this, we had what? Like Dark Magician of Chaos. And that might've been like the only one. And that Dark Magician of Chaos like set the bar for how good a two tribute monster had to be to be playable. But uh, Light and Darkness Dragon, I think is definitely up there. Mm. This is really hard. I don't blame you. I have childhood memories of being on the receiving end of a light and darkness dragon. And uh, this card sucks to play against. Yeah, it does. Hmm. 
Right, well, at minimum, I can't let the Snipe Hunter live. So I'm going to uh, activate Hammer Shot. Okay, so Light and Darkness Dragon negates. Oh, right. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Ah, this sucks. All right, I'll just special you want to take Cyber Dragon then. We'll walk into the Snipe Hunter. <laughs> okay, so I will take 600 from that. Well, I'm not dead. I'm just dying. All right, I will set one. Uh, you're good to go. Okay, I will draw for turn. That's pretty good, uh, but I do have Light and Darkness Dragon up. All right, uh, we'll send Light and Darkness in. Okay, so on attack declaration, I'm going to activate Enemy Controller. Uh, I'm going to target your Light and Darkness Dragon to switch it to defense. Uh, that okay. mandatory and that is going to going to negate. Mm-hmm. And then correct. your monster is then... going to be just under the necessary attack to get over my Cyber Dragon. That is correct. So that will out the Light and Darkness Dragon. However, that does trigger its effect. So it's... I do get to now summon the Disc Commander that is in my graveyard. Yeah, and I'm that not triggers super his happy effect. About it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, not great for you. And uh, it's about to get a lot worse because I now get to use the Destiny draw that I just drew to pitch the Malicious that was sitting in my hand and draw some more cards. That's fine. But Cyber Dragon is a pretty good card. He's a I will set a monster. Yep. I will set a few. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be it for me. Go ahead, buddy. I'll draw for turn. Anything? Nope. I know you have one hammer shot still in hand. I do. I also have a heavy storm. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wing blast the Sidra to the top in response. Hitching a DD crow. Sure, that's fine. Okay. It was a mirror force, so nice hit. Uh, that worked out really well for me. Um, hmm. So you're gonna be able to get the Treeborn Frog back. I can never cut you off of Monarchs entirely. No reason to waste the hammer shot on the fucking Disc Commander. I'm at 18, dead to pretty much everything. You've got a Malicious in Graveyard. You didn't banish it last turn, which makes me think either you have the other Malicious in hand, which would be fantastic news for me, or you just forgot, which I think is more likely. Shoot. Fair, yeah. fair. Oh, man. And this is the position I put myself in. I mean, I kind of had to spend my whole hand getting rid of the Light and Darkness Dragon, and now I have to contend with the fucking Perfect Circle afterwards. That's how it feels. Yep, that's exactly how playing against Lad feels. As soon as you feel like you made progress it just one step forward two steps back what else would you be setting what else would you be setting in this deck i just i can't even think of any good sets Fearmonger, maybe could be spy how much am i beat up about spy probably not much at all okay so the card in my hand that i drew is another cyber dragon so the phoenix wing wind blast worked wow. out pretty well for me <laughs> okay i am going to attack and I, I i'm hoping what am i hoping for here could be like oh god there's just not a good one spirit reaper is bad sand Gan's bad <sighs> Uh, even spies bad. We'll go for it. Okay, so it was Sangin. <sighs> Fuck me. Yep. Now with that Sangin. Uh... Now people didn't play two Snipe Hunter, so I'm not super scared about that. But you've got a lot of good gets here. You would think I do, but I actually don't know how good they are. <laughs> I kind of the... wish I didn't already use the Snipe Hunter because that would have been the best case scenario here. You could um, get the uh, the second Malicious. That seems like something I would do. Yes. Okay. I know you're going to draw Sidra next turn. Well, what? It could be anything, I, buddy. I'll grab a... That's probably my best bet, right? Yeah. I'll grab a card trooper. Wow, trooper. That's... um. I don't know how I feel about that one. That's pretty optimistic, buddy. It is very optimistic. I don't know if you have anything else you really want to mill. And maybe you're just putting me in a position where if you draw a removal spell, you kill me. Uh, okay, uh, back to you. Okay, uh, we'll drop and stand by. I will bring back the frog. Froge is fine. Actually remembering it in the standby phase this time. And that actually worked out quite well for me because we top decked the premature burial. Okay. That's going to uh, bring back good, one. good old snipe hunter. So what's, what's now my win this is funny. Here? Two sixes. Two sixes. Yep. That's pretty much what it boils down to. So let's go ahead and roll. We are going to target the cyber dragon. There's fuck one! Off. There's one! There's one! Let's fucking go! Oh my god, I'm in such a good position if you fuck this up. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm in such a good position if you fuck this up. You gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. Ugh. You're drawing Sidra next turn, so you can't kill me if this doesn't work. That's true. Statistically, I should hit this, so I'm gonna go for it. I Get fucked! Oh Get my god! Old. Oh my god. Oh, how stupid. Unbelievable. Ugh. Okay, well, this was fun. It was. I had a good Double time. miss on Snipe Hunter. Insane. All right, so again, you can't kill me. Pretty unfortunate. I know what your draw is. Yeah, that's like the one saving grace, but then I don't know how I'm winning at this point. Well, uh, we're kind of just waiting on a Ryza or another Light and Darkness Dragon. Basically. Right? 
basically. Either of those would do yeah. pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So with that said, I'm actually going to banish the malicious to get the other malicious out of my deck, uh, oh, wow. just to thin my deck a little bit. Yeah, sure. And uh, I'll just pass the turn, buddy. Go ahead. All right, well, uh, here's a shock. I got to go into the Snipe Hunter. Okay. Let me think for a second about my draw. Hmm, damn. Ooh, that's a crazy draw. <laughs> oh, wow. I wouldn't have expected that. All right, blow See, my back the move, out. Joseph, was to sack Cyber Dragon for Cyber Dragon. I don't know what you were thinking. Rise Clearly, I that could have just won you Please do not come to Simo's hand. <sighs> yeah, that's typical. All right, uh, I'll set and pass. Go. Okay, well, uh, at least it's not Ryza. Oh, Miss. fuck me. Okay, that's a good sign. Would be nice, would be nice. Uh, I'll go to battle. I'm going to attack into the Treeborn here. Sure. All right, uh, second main, I'm going to set two. You're good. Okay. So one of those is a hammer shot. What if I kept the hammer shot in hand and I set the Cyber Dragon? Uh, Infernity plays in 2008. I like it. I exactly, like it. Exactly, exactly. Oh my God. Well, the funny thing is because hammer shots reciprocal, as long as you have Cyber Dragon up and as long as you don't draw a monster, I'm not technically dead here. It doesn't look good for me. It's not great. It's not oh, I great. I, I will pass. Gadget. I'd kill for a I gadget. I will pass. All right, stand by main. Yep. Okay, I don't have to kill for a gadget because I drew a gadget. Ah, uh, that's like the worst one. Yeah, effect's fine. All right, I'll grab a green. Okay. All right, I will attempt to clear the field here. Uh, we're going to go yellow gadget into malicious. Mm, yeah, so malicious dies. Hard position to be in here. Um, I don't actually know if I want to send the disc commander to the graveyard because if that set card is like a called, that's so fucking bad for me. But I don't think your deck would even really be playing a call. Oh, it probably would. I, it probably uh, is. Let's be honest. Conflicting <laughs> with Treeborn is never that big of a deal. And uh, if it's not call, it's got to be something chainable, like a Phoenix Wing or something. And if that's the case, uh, then it doesn't actually matter. You can turn the Treeborn on regardless, and we're just waiting on Monarchs. Okay, I am going to Wing Blast the side here. Uh, okay. Nobleman. Ooh. I see why you were upset about the gadget. That's so bad for you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so what is going to fuck me up here? Um, light and darkness dragon is extremely bad, obviously. Um, there's a lot that's really bad. Ah, jeez. Okay, yeah, you're good. It's really gonna come down to, I think if I can get a Raise sick Riza. tribute Raise off the Riza. top. Get the frog back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the nice thing is, is that your hand is gadget double Sidra. So the Sidras are just going to rot for a while. Uh, you do have the gadgets, however, which is not fantastic. Um, however, you still can't hammer shot me. I'm not dead on this board unless your back row is specifically something that gives you another monster on the field. I don't know how many cards actually do that in your deck. I guess it could be called if you're on called. Like call with a gadget's pretty good. Uh, what if I call back the Hydro Geddon and I trigger it the fourth time? You know, Pot of Avarice is a card too. <laughs> so yes, that's possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very sad, but I'm gonna pass here. All right, I think that's probably right. Uh, I gotta go for green here. Yep, get the red. Yep. Oh God, I would have killed for this stuff on top of my deck. All right, let's go to combat. I will wipe it. Okay. Board has been wiped. Uh, feel good about the disc commander being off the field. You are good to go. Okay, so we'll go to standby. We, uh, we'll get the frog back. Yep. Uh, I'm going to heavy storm. Let's see what you had. It was hammer shot and torrential tribute. Okay. Is that, that off the torrential. top or that was last turn? It would have to be off the top. It was off the top. It was yeah. off the top. Uh that's just not going to matter. Yeah, no, you got this one. I have the fear monger, but the problem is it doesn't res till the next standby and slow, having yeah. the gadget. Yep, it's too slow. I actually probably should have said it last turn. I was wanting you to clear disc commander first, but uh, wow. yeah, that was that yeah. was a fucking that was a fucking game and a half. And I got to tell you, I triggered Hydro, so I was never losing it, baby. <laughs> Okay, Joseph, so before we get into the second game, I just need to acknowledge the fact that I'm a dirty cheater and uh, I had two Sangens in my deck when one of them should have been a Stratos. I don't know if that affected the outcome of that game at all because I still lost. I think Sangen was actually better in the instance I drew it, but we have Stratos in the deck now, ladies and gentlemen, through the power of video editing. You'll never know. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's not surprising to me that you have to cheat to win, but you know, I, I understand, you know, you got it. This is called angle shooting to those of you in the business. Uh, but uh, for game two, I certainly hope that you... Uh, 
uh, brick on Stratos, like I bricked on Hydro Get On. Well, good thing I put uh, Stratos in the deck because I drew him this time. So let's Great. start yeah, with go that. For it, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this should be my second Sangan. Excuse mm -hmm. me. You know, I think we'll I get a copy of Disc Commander. Yep. And uh, we're going to go ahead and fire this Destiny draw by discarding Jesus the Disc Commander. Christ. We'll draw some more cards. Yeah, no, I think go that's for pretty it. good. Yeah, I think it's fine, right? Everything's fine. All right, so we will set a total of one. Uh, Heavy Storm is a card too, right? Yeah. So it is. Uh, we'll go set one and set two, and I'll pass it to you. Go ahead. All right, uh, I guess I'll draw for turn. Anything in standby? I will dust shoot you. All right, so here's what I'm working with. Uh, dust shoot him. My own, alongside a hydro get on and a red gadget. So those are your picks. That's a lot of traps too. Um, hmm. Prential dust shoot rug econ. Well, I think the pick here is gadget. Uh, your get on can't really do anything to my Stratos. Well, that's not true. It technically can, but yeah, uh, gadget's the pick here. So we'll get him back. All right, uh, back he goes. Yep, and you may proceed. All right, uh, I'm gonna normal get on response. You gonna you gonna econ my uh, my Stratos? I'm gonna try to go to battle, get on attack. Do you have a response? Am I gonna really let get on resolve twice in one game? You know the drill, buddy. All right, fire the econ. I will. Okay. Yep, it's fine. So it goes to defense, Stratos dies, and then you get your other get on. Get in my get on. Die to mirror force. <laughs> that is correct. It was mirror force. Okay, fine. Well, uh, I'm a little pe uh, peeved about it, but it's not that bad. I'll go to main two. I'm going to set two cards, and you are good to go. Okay, so one of those is a dust shoot, so let me see it. Sure, sure. Let's see what we're yep. working with. Uh, Pretty decent one. Jesus Christ. This is a pretty decent one. Oh my gosh. This is, wow, this is terrible news. Yeah, this is pretty bad for you. The, the breaker off the top really kind of helps breaker with your specific top. back row. Oh, I think the correct okay. pick here, Joseph, if you'll entertain me, is yeah, Cyber is Dragon. Ooh, that's that's that sounded pretty good. I have to take the fucking breaker, unfortunately. I think you do have to take breaker. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so now the question is, as I shuffle up here, which of the two cards did you set? Did you set the torrential or did you set the pulling the rug? Pulling the rug is good against the monarchs specifically. Torrential may have been a better card for... I feel like you'd set rug for if I have like a tribute summon play... I feel like Torrential would be better when I'm already like established. You could get me that way. So I'm going to go with it possibly being a rug and I'm going to set and I will set a couple and I will pass the turn. So it's the Phoenix Wing and the MST. Sure. I'll do, uh, go to main one. Yep. Uh, this is a rough one for sure. Hmm. Well, uh, with your back row all full, I'm not really full of, fearful of Heavy Storm. Go ahead. All right. So the Torrential's back there. The problem is I don't know now which one it is. So if... You know, it could have just been the first one all along. All right, uh, we'll draw. Anything? Nope. Okay, we'll go to main one. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, I'm going to start by flipping a spy. Spy's fine. Okay. Uh, if you want to torrential me here, by all means, that's fine by me. Uh, I do not. Okay. Uh, then let's go to battle. Let's try to hit in. 24. Okay. You got it. And then main two. I almost just want to not do anything. I think I'll just pass. Go ahead. Sure. Main one? Yep. All right, it's yellow gadget. That's a pretty sick rip. Yep, that's good. Uh, the whole deck is gadgets, buddy. You put them back. The whole deck is gadgets. Yep. All right. Uh, green gadget to the hand. And sure. uh, I am very much not above trading with Spy. Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to have to take that trade. Unless you have like a shrink or something. No, that'd be sweet, huh? All right, I'll pass it back to you, buddy. All right. Sounds good. We'll draw. Mm -hmm. That isn't bad. That's not bad at all. So the one benefit of Spy against Gadget specifically is that you can't really run him over when he's in defense mode. True. I'm going to have to go through these back row eventually. He's got the Gadgets going. All right. Uh, this is going to come down to whether or not my read was correct. I'm going to space the card I was assuming is pulling the rug. It is rug. Okay. All right. So not bad. I will now sack the Spy for a Ryza. Ooh. Now, I will target here prior to you torrentialing this Ryza. I will target that card specifically. All right. Uh, so I'm going to activate a card called Torrential Tribute. Okay, sure. So <laughs> chain resolves. That card will go back to the top and yep. Ryza will go to grave. And oh, that will be the end of my This was so screen. punishing if you yeah. did it wrong. Yeah, it was very punishing. So set card is Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, I don't know one of the cards in your hand. I know the other one is a Cyber Dragon. Correct. Hmm. Uh, I will normal the green gadget. Sure. Go get the red. 
Uh, I guess I'll set this card again, and you're good to go. Okay, uh, I'll draw. That's not bad. So I know your hand is red, green on field. I don't know that other set. Right. What could that possibly be? When I, I saw Judgment in the previous game. This deck is literally 90% traps. I feel like you would have just Judgmented Ryza, unless you really just wanted to... Nah, I feel like you still could have done that anyway. All right, uh, let's run out a Cyber Dragon. Mm. Really have a really clean out to this card. Uh, this is uh, this is scuffed. Um, that's fine. Okay. Uh, let's try to run into the gadget. Also fine. Okay. Whew, okay. <laughs> Made it that far. I honestly was expecting Sidra to die to like seven different cards. Uh, main two. I will just go ahead and set a monster, and I'll pass. I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. Uh, I'm gonna normal breaker here. <sighs> Ooh, that's pretty good. Um, you have red in hand. Right. You know my back row's wing blast, so I can talk about this out loud. So I am going to use this because I'm just going to lose it. I have a treeborn frog in hand, so it actually kind of works out. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. It's not bad. Uh, do I want to spin back the breaker or do I want to just set you back on the back row? If I draw another back row, giving you breaker back is actually just terrible. So I am going to just give you back. I'm going to set that card back. Uh, Sure. Okay. You may proceed. This is kind of crusty. Uh, if that set card is Fearmonger, I lose the game. Uh, otherwise, it's probably a bunch of guys that can't die to battle. Or exactly uh, Sangan. God, there's not really a good uh, hit for me here. Uh, I want to use him before I lose him, though. So let's get in. At least know what it is. It is the Fearmonger. Wow, that's really bad. Whoa, that's, that's probably really the bad. worst case scenario for you here. Yep. I'll draw. Standby yep. phase, uh, two triggers. So I get back the frog and I get back the disc commander. Yep. And then disc commander triggers, I draw two. Yeah. That is insane. Oh my God. That doesn't win me the game, however. I will sack the disc commander for the riser that I drew. How does uh, this we will not spin win you breaker the game? to the top because I can't kill you. <laughs> That's why. You, you know the top two cards of my deck. But it doesn't kill you now. I am going to concede. <laughs>probably played that one wrong. The set card you didn't see was Solemn Judgment. So if I'd Solemn the Reza, I could have kept the Torrential. And then the heads up play would have been normal red Torrential, the Sidra and the Fearmonger. And that like maybe gets me out of it, but you draw the Ryza next turn with the Treeborn Frog and Graveyard. So maybe it doesn't. I this It's a hard game state to manage for sure. Tough. And yeah. uh, hopefully going first will give me the edge I need for this game three. Uh, good luck to you. Oh, you gotta be fucking I was very scared to set the Fearmonger into a Torrential board, so I was very happy I hit that with the Ryza. I'm on a normal red gadget. That's a great start, yeah. Go get a green gadget? Yellow gadget. I'm never going to get this Yellow. one. Yellow. Yes. You learned your colors, Joseph. I'm so proud. All right. Go ahead. We'll draw. Nope. Oh, no back row. That's... That's pretty bad. Uh, Not ideal. Fortunately for you, my hand is also uh, very similar. Go ahead. Hmm. Is it? I feel like, in fact, it is not. Uh, I mean, I don't have the gadgets, but uh, the lack of back row is uh, definitely something that we right. can share. I mean, it's paid off so far. Let's go for a hydro get on. Oh, God. Uh, every time. I mean, it, it, it's been not okay. this time, idiot. Take a thousand from Marshmallow. Yeah. Uh, hmm. That sucks. What happens, Joseph, when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? It's not ideal. <laughs> All right, we'll draw. Uh, that's like, okay. This is a weird one. I like having Marshmallow on the field because again, you, you need to have like a very specific card to out it. And I don't think you have many of those specific cards at your disposal, at least right now. But I also like this as well. Uh, we will bring out the Lord and Savior, Rise of the Storm Monarch, targeting the set. Uh, sorry. I was pulling the rug. That's unfortunate. All right, so he will perish. Then, wow, that sucks. We do not have a lot going on here. I will set two cards and pass to you. <sighs> Anything in standby? Nope. All right, so the reason I didn't do this was the whole hand is back row and I have a heavy storm. Oh, sure, sure, okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Yep, uh, you got the mirror force. I'll take it. Uh, let's normal summon that yellow gadget and get a green. Yep. Oh, my kingdom for some fucking monsters with any attack whatsoever. I'll take yellow, it all. Green, hydro. Oh, that's more than that. 
It's got to be more no, than that. Come it's on. 40, it's 25 plus 16. That's 41. That's it. Oh, God. This deck sucks. You said you have like five back row. What are you worried about? I've got two. And if you must know, a fucking heavy storm. Yeah, I'll draw. That's great. Anything? No. All right. Uh, well, special is Sidra. Fine. <sighs> I will premature burial targeting Ryza. Uh, right. That's neat. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, I've got two monsters that are bigger than your three. Correct. I've lost mirror two mirror four specifically very many times in this series. Also correct. What else could he have? I've seen. Torrential. I feel like this is a pretty nice torrential though. So clearly, even if you <laughs> if I torrential it, this could... board, uh, I... <laughs> I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. I'll, I mean, you have green gadget for follow up. So I mean, you could also just have something else to deal with the board anyway, like a mirror force. Mm, you know, theoretically. Theoretically. Hypothetically, you yeah. know, Joseph, if you did have mirror force, you'd tell me you'd have it, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's of like a, it's like being a cop. You know, you ask and they have to tell you. It's the law. Trust me, I've taken one semester of law school. What else have I seen? Uh, you've seen pulling the rug. Uh, you've seen trap dust shoot. I've seen uh, judgment. You've seen the admit well. defeat screen. Uh, you're pretty intimately familiar with I've that seen, one. I, I've seen that many a times. You may yes. be seeing it again uh, in another second if you don't play your cards possible. right here. I have a play. Judgment's at three in this format, right? It is. Okay. And mirror force is at one. So I, I'm in the situation now where do I play around the three of or do I play around the one of? I feel like I feel like playing around the three of is the correct thing to do but playing but around the one, the one of, of it's so it feels so bad it's like calling eight off of reasoning like four but it's is also the very one, funny but it, it would be very funny you're right i don't know what else you could have there is a universe where i just don't attack hammer shot can deal with that though hammer shot econ specifically deals with this board uh but like that's kind of optimistic and that's two cards so now we're looking at you know combinations of cards so that that's just like at that point, I might as well play around something else. <sighs> okay, if it's Mirror Force, so be it. I, I, this is the best move I'm gonna make. Sure. Uh, on attack Show declaration. It Show it to me. I'll take 900. Wow. Holy <laughs> shit. All right. Uh, I mean, you yeah, go yeah, to Mirror yeah. Force that one. What so. is this? Uh, 11. Ah, I see. <clears throat> Damage step. What the fuck do you use it? Shrink. That's right, motherfucker. Get your little god down to size. Back to 12. Take your 100. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's to be expected. I probably deserve that after the progression series for all the times I did that to gauge. Okay. Uh, so now I'm dead to a lot of cards. You still have your normal, I will go to right? main two. I haven't normaled. That's but not, that's interesting. I don't know how much it's going to matter. Maybe I do normal. My back's to the wall here. Like so many cards just kind of kill me. It's funny that uh, I'm a hundred off of getting killed, but I know you have green in hand. So I know that's one card. This is such a bad board state for you too. Cause like if your normal's like a set guy like Sangan that I get to proc Hydro and maybe just win the game off that. All right, Joseph, how lucky you feeling, buddy? Extremely lucky. All right, I'm going to normal summon Snipe Hunter. Oh. Wow, uh, so you would snipe targeting my hydro? That would, wow, that would be really rough. Um, oh gosh, uh, I have no response. All right, we're gonna fire Snipe Hunter. I had the lad in hand, oh. and that's the play I was thinking loses to judgment exactly. So that's right. why I was a bit concerned about just sacking Sidra and Ryza for a lad. What's your uh, target, buddy? It's gonna be hydro. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. Okay. I'm probably dead if this doesn't go through. Oh, okay. okay. It went through. All right, to gravy goes. All right, uh, I'm dead to a million cards, but I've pretty much done everything I can do to survive I drew at this the point. worst fucking card in my deck. I literally <laughs> the worst fucking card in my deck. Okay, I'm going to tribute summon Cyber Dragon and get into the Snipe Hunter. Okay, fair. So I'll take six. Uh, second main, I will set one. You're good to go. Okay, so green's still in hand. That's pretty good. That's all right. We'll draw. Yep. Okay, so... On the board as it currently stands, if I don't do anything, we could have a universe where you just, in the simplest of situations, just normal summon green, get red, crash Sidra's, hit in with the gadget. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's fine. You're still up five cards on me. So, you know, it is what it is. You have two back row. Don't think... 
That's going to cut it. I will pass. I'll draw. See it. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, it's it's just green. Okay, sure. All right, let's go get a red. Yep. Uh, and then we will go to combat. I'll sure. trade these two you if you'll allow it. Oh, God, could you imagine uh, uh, if I had another shrink? I was waiting for the shrink. I was waiting for you just oh, to go damage step into the mic as deeply as you could. Don't worry, buddy. Uh, I'm, I'm not a you, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. This is going to need to be one hell of a top deck. It also would have been nice if I didn't set that Avarice and lose it to Heavy Storm because I now exactly have five monsters in Grave. I honestly thought I was going to die prior to that happening, but mm -hmm. it is how it is. Uh, that is probably not going to cut it. I um, will set two cards and pass. Okay, I'll draw for turn. Stand yep. by main. Uh, red gadget. Sure. And I'll grab yellow. God, this just never ends, huh? Yeah. All right, uh, let's see what you got. Yeah, you got it. Oh, <laughs> holy shit. All right. Phoenix wing blast, wing brain, brain control. control. There was nothing uh, I could do with that. So There's for what it's nothing. worth, that turn you could have summoned Lad, it was Judgment. You played absolutely correctly. 100%. I, right. I had a feeling you might have had Judgment when you were questioning the activation of Premature Burial, which yep. is, was also influencing my decision not to go for it. So yeah, I... And again, it's a three of versus the Mirror Force one of. Mm -hmm. So that was just the other guiding logic there. Yeah, uh, wow. I, I honestly think... I don't know if Avarice would have mattered... Uh, it would not have because Certainly my draws. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I would have had to shuffle back, but oh, my draws would just shoot Rhoda. Yikes. So Rhoda could have gotten me Stratos, but like Stratos just dies to Judgment anyway. I think when you have Judgment on this board and I have zero cards, you basically just have it wrapped up. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, the hand is Hydro Cyber <laughs> Dimensional Prison, but realistically, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing that won me the back half of that game was that every single gadget turned into another gadget. Even yep. the big turn where you went for a push with Sidra and uh, Reza. Uh, I think went net negative on advantage just because every gadget had already cycled. These cards are stupid good. Yep. They're really, really strong. And that's why they were, uh, they're semi-limited, I believe, currently. Yes? They are, yes. I'm on only yeah. two of each individual one. I, we almost got through all of them. We've got a green and a red remaining. Yeah. And just the fact that, especially two against Perfect Circle specifically, when you're playing cards like Wing Blast on top of it, you're already losing advantage when you trade with the gadgets most of the time. But then mm -hmm. the fact, too, that Wing Blast forces you to discard on top of it, that is like the ultimate neg. And it really just disincentivizes you from playing cards like this. this. The problem is I didn't really have many other options to like even side deck into board out of this because I really wanted to. But aside from going into, I, I don't even know. There, there was like nothing else that I really could have even thought of to put in its place. It's pretty good at dealing with like the larger threats like the Sidras. And we saw yeah. it put in some work in game too. Sure. I guess hitting back row exclusively at that point is fine. But yeah, the gadgets are just so strong at being able to take on those one for one exchanges and uh, usually coming out on top. I think you have to kind of conceptualize your deck as like this aggro tempo variant that attempts to just like get an empty board every turn and attack for 24 and uh phoenix wing wind blast is really good either as a scuffed mst or a way to put like my normal summoned gadget back on my deck and uh drop me an attack step i think it's probably good enough but you are right that it feels so fucking bad to send two cards to the graveyard just to put a gadget that already replaced itself back on top of the deck Ooh, this was a this I, was a hell of a set this was a great one though i think this really demonstrates just the power of both of these decks as they continue to evolve right like we've even seen gadgets for a couple episodes and yep. we've seen just basically basically the circle montage the last few episodes. But even so, right, like we have now, I just shuffled it back in the deck, but the introduction of Light and Darkness Dragon, like this mm -hmm. card is insane. Mm -hmm. This card is so powerful. It's so difficult to deal with because there's so few ways to actually interact with it. And it, it, it's just a house. That's why so many other decks just folded to it so quickly. As soon as that card hits down, it's, you know, it, there's no judgment. I mean, you pretty much have full control of the game at that point. Yeah, um, the problem with Lad uh, is that it is... Well, so there's a couple of problems with Lad, um, but this is the tournament at which it sort of broke out. Uh, it comes back and forth uh, over the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh's history, you know. Uh, it's occasionally in uh, Frognark-type builds later on, uh, etc. It's certainly a very powerful card. Uh, but more than anything else what this card does is it influences deck building, right? Like, because its effect is mandatory and because it's once per chain, uh, instead of playing these purely reactive 
effective uh, spell cards like Hammer Shot, uh, like uh, Smashing Ground, etc. You kind of have to start playing quick plays like Econ that proc its effect manually so you can then respond with another quick play removal spell uh, to get into the same chain. It, it's just a it, it's just a house. And the fact that it also cycles into uh, Disc Commander in this deck is just unthinkably strong. Um, but as people start recognizing that if you retool the amount and type of removal spell you're playing, you can more effectively deal with this card, it does kind of fall off. And I think a combination of people engineering that and the absolute fuckery of the next couple of sets of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, mean that this guy takes a, a bit of a hiatus after this exact episode, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, just before I go on talking about the next set, you're right. I mean, having two more enablers for an in-graveyard disc commander, like that already on top of the premature burial, the Call of the Haunted, the uh, Fear Monger, which... I can't believe still resolves at this yep. point. Yep. Uh, it, it's just allowing you to just draw more cards. I think that's the most broken part because Lad is supposed to wipe your board, but that doesn't matter if you're bringing back a card that draws you more cards. And that just gets you right back into the game. Your opponent spent maybe two minimum, three maybe at most resources to clear a Lad, and then you're just drawing a bunch of cards after it. The exchange there is just not good. But you're right. Phantom Darkness is the next set, and it's probably going to be the next episode that we have. And because of the overwhelming power level of cards like Dark Arm Dragon and all the other cards in that set, Light and Darkness Dragon just kind of falls to the wayside because why would you play this dragon when you can play uh, the full-on Dark Dragon in Dark Arm Dragon and just win the game on like turn two? And it's just an absolute nightmare of a time. It's going to be interesting next episode. I'm not sure if we're going to do Dark Arm Return Mirror because that was basically like a tier zero format at that point. Uh, I guess leading up to it, Perfect Circle was still trying to fight against the Dark Dark Arm Return decks, and then we get to the point where it's like nothing but Dark Arm Return. So maybe we'll have to do a two-header episode in that respect, but I can't wait. That is going to be so much fun when we get to that point. It is. Um, I will say it. the fact that Light and Darkest Dragon blows up your board, it just doesn't matter for decks like yours. All of your traps are chainable, stuff like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. All of your spells are reactive, stuff like Brain Control. And even after you wipe the board, your board post lad rev resolution is Disc Commander Treeborn Frog. So you've still got all these resources on your side of the field, even after it resolves. And while Dark Arm Dragon very much does push lad out of contention, during late Dark Arm Dragon format, there were decks that played both. Yeah, and, it's uh, true. That and is that is going to suck. I hope we don't have to see that shit. Maybe we'll have to show some of that off, because I think the audience, for how much they love jank they're gonna love that but joseph you did stop the three peat we've so congratulations never had it on that one <laughs> it's like five <laughs> we had what the first four were you and we've never had a three game win streak since yeah and i don't exactly count that again because that was magic ruler format right that was very when good confiscation at drawing delinquent duo. exactly exactly that doesn't count that does not uh, count but it got stopped uh i could have played this one a little bit better i think but i i did love the back and forth of this a lot this was actually a very fun set to play and i, mean, uh, I would encourage people to try this one out this was a lot of fun yeah i i, I could have played better too these were hard decks to play i mean yeah certainly uh the reason you see so much repetition in the top eights during this deck or during this period is because i mean we've spoken about it before but the gap between the players who knew what they're doing and the players like us ah uh, it was pretty night and day you could even call it a light and a darkness just stop just, just stop. yeah that was a bit of a stretch i'm sorry i'll leave the puns <laughs> to you buddy <laughs> So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Joseph will not be in the Shirt of Shame next time. So unfortunate, but we'll get him next time because Dark Arm Dragon is right around the corner and God, is this going to be a clusterfuck of an episode. I can't wait, but we do have to shout out our patrons as always. So big shouts to Shadow1317, Sean Alling Jr., Shotagonist, and Gayoko, Cameron Smith, Joshua Schley, Tim's Zero X3, Ika Ironfang, Pony Stark, Ian Musa, Michael Dente, Dan the Man Hoban, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wild, Draconic, Dolly Wop, Dragon Lord, Inuno Tiger, show Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Emil Cohen, Jordan Coons, Calvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, Drew Nerdgasm, Benjamin Fuller, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Damage Step, Clute, Henry Roaming, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, Shane Reese, Colty, David Liu, Rockley325, Lane Rogers, Brett Havy, I side in Gren Maju in Salads, that's a new one, <laughs> Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Garth Hawks, DOW, Gigabyte 9436, John 2 Base, Calvin, and Pony Stark. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.